Hello. So you'd like to speak beautiful English, would you? The very first step is to choose which English you wish to speak. There are three major genres of English in the world, British, American, and Indian. Each one has its own characteristic pronunciation and expressions. In this video, I will show you the secret pronunciation characteristics of each one. As you study English, it's important to become familiar with the basic differences between British, American, and Indian accents. Your awareness of these general patterns can sharpen your ears and help you to improve your own communication skills. As an English teacher living in Bhutan, I find that Bhutanese English has been influenced by all three genres. British English is the original, of course, and it has been somewhat modified by Canadians that teach American English here. Bhutanese English is also influenced by Indian pronunciation. What are the major concentrations of English speakers? I'm told there are about 1.2 billion English speakers in the world. Primary concentrations of English are in the Americas, with the US and Canada having 313 million, India, 125 million English speakers, and the UK, 60 million. Other concentrations of English speakers are Africa, with 177 million, Pakistan, 108 million, and Australia, with 17 million. Well, which English do you wish to speak? Neither British, American, or Indian English is better than the other. Our goal is simply clear communication. In this video, I've mixed up some sample sentences just to illustrate word sounds particular to that accent. In, Brit in British English, you might hear it this way. Take your time. Call the doctor after tea. Park the new car very carefully. Wait for me at the waterfall. No worries at all. If you were somewhere in America, you might hear it like this. Take your time. Call the doctor after tea. Park the car very carefully. Wait for me at the waterfall. No worries at all. Now, if you were in Delhi, you might hear it this way. Take your time. Call the doctor after tea. Park the new car very carefully. Wait for me at the waterfall. No worries at all. So, let's start with British. How do the British pronounce English? Well, there are countless accents and dialects in Great Britain. So, generally speaking, British English is pronounced rather forward in the mouth, not swallowed back. The T's are better pronounced. The T's after, or I'm sorry, the R's after a vowel are dropped. Were, sawed, turn. The U sound is often pronounced U as in new attitude. Um, there, uh, the ah sound, so common in American, is pronounced ah, as in both, ask, laugh, half. Many other vowels are short, like bit, lot, wit. Some are long, like bought, taught, and awful. Other vowels are diphthongs. Oh dear, I've been caught reciting poetry as Dame Judi Dench head of M16 in the James Bond film Skyfall. Chairman, ministers, today I've repeatedly heard how irrelevant my department has become. Why do we need agents? The double O section isn't at all rather quaint. Well, I suppose I see quite a different world than you do, and the truth is what I see frightens me. I'm frightened because our enemies are no longer known to us. They do not exist on a map, they are not nations, they are individuals. And look around you, who do you fear? Can you see a face, a uniform, a flag? No, our world is not more transparent now, it's more opaque. It is in the shadows and that is where we must do battle. 
So before you declare as irrelevant, ask yourselves, how safe do you feel? Just one more thing to say. My late husband was a great lover of poetry and um, I suppose some of it sunk in despite my best intentions. And here today, I remember this, I think from Tennyson. We are not now that strength which in old days moved, moved earth and heaven. That which we are, we are. One equal temper of heroic hearts made weak by time and fate, but strong in will to strive, to seek, to find and not to yield. How do Americans pronounce English? Here's a few general guidelines. Americans speak more back in the mouth. The R's are pronounced with a raised tongue in the back, not rolled with a flip of the tongue. The T's are sometimes dropped or softened to a D, like what a pretty letter. American word pace is often slower. Diphthongs are not fast, like I round fluent. The ah sound is often nasal, as in bath, ask, answer, after. Words are sometimes run, to, run together with flu, fewer glottal separations in beginning vowels, like I adore apples, onions, and oranges. Wait a minute, I could say that better with no glottals. I adore apples, onions, and oranges. Here's a warning. Even the most well-spoken Americans take shortcuts using contractions and lazy inventions like wanna, gotcha, did you have to, can't. In addition, we use idioms peculiar to America, so you may get the words, but the, re the meaning remains a mystery. For example, you might hear this in America. Hey, John, what are you doing? We're all so pumped about your winning that big scholarship. I want to take you out for barbecue ribs to celebrate. Did you see that letter from the university today? Maybe it's an answer about your class schedule. Are you ready to go? But did you notice that dirty spot on your shirt? Can't you do something? If you can clean up your act, I'll foot the bill for Harry's Bar in Silver City. Good going, that's a lot better. Let's take my new car. Want to drive? You said you're a whiz at navigating or maybe you're just pulling my leg. Come on, hurry up, let's go. Did you hear the R's in the back? Diphthongs that take their time. Did you hear the lazy T's that sound pretty much like D's? Lots of contractions and idiomatic expressions. Welcome to America. What about India? In the 17th century, British rule in India created a new language. The very idea of British rule over India seems inexplicable today. Consider the fact that Indian written history stretches back over 4,000 years, whereas British English, on the other hand, wasn't even a written language until the 9th century, almost 3,000 years later. In 1850, India had a population of over 200 million. But Britain's population at that time was only 16.6 million. How then did Britain manage to control India for 200 years until 1947? The keys seem to have been superior weaponry, economic strategy, and perhaps Eurocentric confidence? How do Indians pronounce English? Indians speak English much like their mother tongue, be it Hindi, Bengali, or Tamil. Generally speaking, the R's are rolled, very terrible rain. The L's are forward, diphthongs are quick, and many words are short. Life, time, call. TH doesn't exist. Thinking, mout. The T's, K's, and P's are not aspirated. From the diaphragm, like in American and British, they sort of explode breathlessly in the mouth. Take your tea, carry your coat, play cricket. W is sometimes a V, 
wait at the waterfall. Glottals on beginning vowels can be observed often. Indian English sometimes has a musical quality. Of course, Indian accents vary widely as there are hundreds of native languages and millions of English uh, of Indians have studied abroad. Here is a slightly exaggerated example of Indian English. Namaste. Today it was raining and we were getting very cold. We had to tie our shoes and boil the water for tea. There was so much rain we were worried about little Govinda and we were calling the police three times. We were afraid he was getting late for school and it was terrible. My daughter said, take your time and park the car very carefully. I am telling you the truth. The path to world peace is to forget our problems and to make a new friend every day. Did you hear the unaspirated D's, P's and K's? Did you notice the quick vowels and diphthongs and the rolled R's? Welcome to Mother India. I hope this brief explanation of British, American, and Indian English pronunciation has been helpful for you. You can find more details below. Best wishes for your beautiful communication.